Hi everyone. The next problem we're going to do is from chapter 29 and this is a quick analysis of a different kind of market one we haven't been introduced to until now. Um, it's called a monopsony and in this case um, it's a market where a buyer of an input is the only buyer of that input so they have a monopoly on buying it. We call it a monopsony. So in this case it's a monopsony in the labor market meaning this firm is the only firm buying monopoly in this particular market. Uh, it's not very common, as you can imagine, um, but an example might be in a small town, um, let's say in a small town in Costa Rica, where the only thing going on is a coffee plantation. Uh, this is only jobs to be had. You might have a monopsony there. So the firm, the coffee plantation owners, they, since they're the only ones buying labor, they will notice that as they want to increase their labor supply, this, uh, the amount that they're buying or the supplied labor, they'll have to pay more to get more. So the wage rate will go up as it goes up. So to get 12 people to work for them, they might have to pay $10 an hour, let's say. Probably not true in Costa Rica. <laughs> uh, at 13 people, they'll have to pay a little bit more. So you can see that's why these numbers, the wage rate is going up as well as the labor supply going up. This is different than uh, a perfectly competitive labor supply market where the wage rate is the same all the time. Um, in most cases, there are a lot of firms buying labor, so they all just pay the same thing. Like, let's say minimum wage for fast food restaurants. They all can pay it, whether or not they hire 10 workers or 20 workers or 100 workers. Um, so this is a unique situation, and so we're going to see um, how we analyze the costs and find the profit maximization um, in this type of market. So um, this is based on problem number 9. The numbers are a little different, but it's the same setup problems 9 and 10 um, in chapter 29. So the first thing we're going to look for is the total wage costs. Now that's just simply all the money that this firm spends on labor. So you're just going to take your amount of labor and multiply it times the wage rate. So that's $120 for that level and we keep going up the numbers here. And you will notice this goes up by more and more instead of going up by the same amount each time because they face an increasing wage rate um, as they increase their, their labor supplied or the labor that they purchase. $195 at this level. $224 and $255. All right, so we fill that in. So again, just simply total wage costs, how much you're buying, how much you're paying for it, multiplying by each other. So the next thing that it asks us to fill out is the marginal factor cost. Now, again, this is one of those weird sounding economic terms, but really again, marginal change in, change in your factor cost. In this case, the factor is labor. Uh, it could be for anything. If you were making pizza dough, it could be flour. Um, you know, if you were making, um, I'm trying to think of another good example, if you were making a, you know, candy, it could be sugar. So these are, it's just the factor cost, in this case it's labor. So you could say marginal labor cost too. So if you see changes in the wording, um, just try and think about what each of it means, because there, a lot of these things are interchangeable terms. Um, and if this were the only input, it could just be marginal cost as well. They don't give us any other inputs. So for our purposes, it will end up just being the marginal cost, but marginal factor cost just means for one particular factor, in this case, labor. So to find the marginal factor cost, I'm going to give it to you down here, the exact formula, is just your change in total costs change in cost over your change in the output used. I'm sorry, not change in output use, <laughs> change in the input. So the change in the resource that you use, change in labor in this place. If it were something like I said, flour, it would be changed in the amount of flour that you used. So change in um, input, or parentheses, in the resource used. Excuse my bad handwriting. So since this is marginal, like a lot of the other things we've done, you're just going to subtract one from the next. Um, so as you can see here, it went up $23, so you spent $23 more on 
labor. That's this factor. Um, and we're only, we're, again, we're dividing by one, so it's not going to change it. So we're really just concerned with this top portion here. Um, we're just going up by one each time. If we were going up by two, we would have to divide by two, so on and so forth. Ooh, excuse me. So, and then you can see it goes up. Now we're spending 25 additional dollars to get to that level. Again, just subtracting 27. I'm sure you can see a pattern going here. And last but not least, 31. Is that lined up? Okay. So, We've answered those two questions. We filled in our total wages. We see them increasing and increasing more and more each time. Uh, and this shows by how much. So we increase by 23, then we increase by 25, going up, 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 up. So as you can see, it gets exceptionally more expensive as you add, as you add more workers. So the next question says, now suppose that this, this firm sells in a perfectly competitive market. So they're buying as a monopoly buyer, but they're selling as a perfect competitor. Um, so coffee market is kind of a good example. If you just think, you know, coffee is just used as um, a commodity, which in, in a lot of ways it is, there are different levels, but you know, it's a commodity product competing with firms all over the world, it's global. Um, they can't really influence the coffee price as a producer, even though they can influence the wage rate as a, as a buyer of, of labor. So let's imagine that the price, the world price, Commodity price for coffee is $25 per unit. I don't know what units it comes in. I don't know per, I don't know what it comes in, but we'll just say it's $25 per unit. And so if this firm is trying to maximize its profits, we want to find out what level of output and what level of labor that is associated with they'll decide to produce at. So just like with a lot of the other things we've looked at, marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Now we know that in a perfectly competitive market, which a coffee market might be in this example, um, price is equal to the marginal revenue. No matter what, no matter how much they supply, how many pounds or tons of coffee, it's always going to be the same unit price. So this price 25 just equals our marginal revenue. and. If we consider this the only cost, again, simplified, um, we can see where our marginal revenue equals our marginal cost. So to get to 99 units, tons, whatever the unit is of coffee, um, the marginal cost is $23. The marginal price is $25. So we're spending less than we're making. So we can see if we can make more. If we go up to 14, um, I'm sorry, 14 people making 106 units of coffee, um, we're spending $25 to get there and we're bringing in $25. So that's where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So that is the point where this, let me just make sure I get straight, where this firm would choose to produce. They would choose to produce where their marginal revenue equals their marginal cost, just like every firm. Um, and we've determined how to find their marginal revenue. It's the commodity price. Um, it's, it's a straight line, like you'd see in a graph for a perfectly competitive market. And we've determined their marginal cost here through their marginal factor cost. Um, and we found them equal at this level. 14 workers um, or 14 hours supply, maybe 14 hours per day, and uh, producing 106 units.